Strike a Chord, Music Chit Chat with your host, Valentino Kikowski. Welcome to Strike a Chord, and I've got the lovely Sarita with me today. Sarita, welcome, and it's, be, it's a pleasure to have you um, on this podcast. Thank you, Valentino, for having me. Uh, it's been a long time we were supposed to meet. I know, it's but been a look, while. Like, that's how it's all happening. It's all about the <laughs> universe and the energy, exactly. you know, at the, same, at the right time uh, for, the, for the right causes, you know. Now, Definitely. Sarita, you're a, an, an awesome musician and I want to get into your head a little bit as to… Do you how sure you want to get in my head <laughs> because people think I'm crazy as well? <laughs> look, I think people think all musicians are crazy to some extent, right? Um, but crazy is good. Crazy is good. Crazy sometimes is happy. Right? Well, you have to be crazy. That's why we're a musician, no? <laughs> I agree. I totally, I totally agree. <laughs> to go to the next, find something. Yeah, the, yeah, the, the, the craziness next, is there. Craziness goes from project to project, project, and then you get even crazier and crazier and crazier sometimes. And crazy, the right way. <laughs> <laughs> the right way with with music and with uh, you know Fun with, with happiness as <laughs> yeah, well. True. You know, um, Sarita, you're a. Uh, you're one of the, a prominent figure here in, in, in Melbourne, you know, for your your Indian style. I think you've you've infused a bit of a westernized classical style in your music. Um you definitely recorded different genres different genres as well. Tell us a little bit about that, you know, about, about your journey here in, in Melbourne. Like when did you do it? When did you, you know, start this journey and particularly here in Melbourne? My journey was started in two thousand. I came mm. to here as a just to visit and see what happened, see if I can study here. Then I found a nice fellow here and I got married, ah, okay. <laughs> Gary. And then, um, of course, then I settled here, um, have one, my son, he's 21 as well. A lot of people don't know, but yeah, he's turning 21 this year. Is so he in the music? Is he a musician or some? Look, I hope he's not because... <laughs> One crazy enough. Is don't a, I don't pain. want to have another crazy one. <laughs> no, he's uh, when he was born. Actually, he was uh, three years old and less than three years old. He was playing a piano as well with my his auntie, and because Gary's mom, she was a very good piano player as well. Uh -huh, runs in the family. S runs in the family. My father is a musician as well. My mom is a musician, and families and musicians. So he then learn a little bit of piano and then to, he can play if you have, if I give him a sitar he can play national anthem and all this stuff and he learns bit guitar a, bit of a prodigy but right now he's just doing his occupational therapy and he's uh, totally away from mom's side totally loves away from it. the craziness the craziness he loves <laughs> <laughs> mom he knows that mom is enough crazy knows you know all this <laughs> rehearsal and jamming with every musicians coming in. It was always like this, you know, even in, in India, in our mm. family. It's music is always, um, rehearsal is happening. My dad is uh, um, writing a new songs and going for the concert and thing. But yeah, when I came back here, I married and then I, um, after a couple, three years, four years, when my mm. son started going back to kinder, then I thought I should pick up my, uh, like I, I did my master of music in India before I came okay. here, in, from SNDT University, um, and then I got married here, and then I thought, okay, I've raised the baby, but I want to get back to the sitar, and so mm. I went back to Monash University here Okay. in 2006. So 2006, 2007, I did my Master of Music from Monash University uh, for music, yeah. Okay. And uh, in my field was that, uh, bringing sitar into it and folk music and culture, plus uh, how I can learn West, like you know, uh, improvisation and to uh, open up with not just having a classical music, but we're learning Western music as well and different tunes and things. That's quite challenging. How, how did you find that? You know, like you were in a Western country, you know, Westernized school, playing the sitar. You know, playing something that. You know, we all know, yeah. but it's again foreign to to Western culture. How did you find that? How did you integrate it wasn't, with that in your learning? It wasn't easy. It was because we, uh, I mean, you know, our music, Indian music, is we based on raga or makam. Yep, that's and right. And Western music is all on based on chords and 
you know of course we and also have modes a skill different modes and things yeah. so when i was uh, uh in monash university rob burke of course he's still there and he's one of my great great mentors as well rob burke and joel croty and sam evans he was there to help me as well um then we did a part of the university um we did a concert in uh, jazz international jazz festival okay it was happening in fed square so the two years concert was there 2006 2007 end ah. of the year and luckily that was the international jazz festival and we did one concert as well with when cat sabrana was there yep. uh, as well so i get to uh, it was nice to meet her, uh, meet her and uh, she was there listening to our performance as well um bringing my folk songs and to uh, sitar ragas it was challenging in a way because i have to show them uh, orally them. you know educate them because you're educating yourself but you're educating them as yeah, well yeah even the words as well uh, i still remember their um it's uh, the that uh we were 26 of us and we did perform in fed square and the first mantra i start singing and there was a started from that then jay dev jay dev jay mangal murti darshan matre man kaam na purti jay dev jay dev there was a ganesh stuti and i thought uh there was zimbabwe some other songs of a culture was there okay. too so we were trying to bring different uh culture together so that's it can you bring indian culture in that mm. and how you can teach so there were chorus as well i was teaching them okay by singing it in notation as yep. well and then i tried to say okay because i did in india as well i did a little bit of study as a master of music when you do it there we give they give us knowledge of okay this is the you know cd f g a b o do re mi fa sol la ti do yeah, the scales the scales are there and not just a western scale we do in uh, mumbai sndt they teach us south indian scale as well okay so south indian is to teacher used to come from kerala or other university and they give demonstration and they give because we have a chapters Okay so, 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 so they used to come in and 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 head um head these sort of programs or yeah with, just yeah. programs so like because uh, as a university when you are learning as a student you're not a performer artist that time you know yeah so other artist will come there and they teach you so we have more knowledge to understand so, because that's the main time if any student wants to take their career to the next level mm. then they should know uh, of course of course all that thing did you find that here did you find the same sort of learning curve here when you when you came here and you started learning did you have other people come in and mentor you from different genres or from different i have to go and search it you have to go and search it i have it. to go and search it because i it's it's a craving you know yeah. there's a hunger is there yeah uh but some people like george used to come bassoon player he yep. comes and um uh greek music when i did i used to run my saffron connection band that at that time yep. so the baron used to come uh, and learn as well because he didn't that time like i don't know greek music is and in indian yep. music is cool uh, we had a lot of connection in bollywood yeah, or uh, the, turkish the, music as yeah. well yeah even the macedonian music as well oh definitely there's the, the scales are very similar if if not the same they're very similar they're very familiar uh, yeah you know uh, so uh, and kamil like kamil fagar recently i did yep. my work with kamil on the on, on the, the kanun, kanun. Yeah, so yeah. it's arabic music you know yeah uh, and totally a, different yeah from and that's a good thing though and i'm good thing that they open to about you know yes. not, it, it was course. not easy because slowly slowly there because indian classical music is the very ancient you know you know where the roots are very long and um and you have to respect that you know i have to respect but um if you want to do something you have to break the rules as well sometimes that's a very good saying if you want to do something you have to break the rules sometimes i i completely agree yeah, because sometimes um you know when the horses have got the blinkers on they're just looking at, you know straight ahead sometimes yeah. you have to take them off to see what's happening on the other side because you never never know otherwise you know yeah of well, course of and course for me starting of like my journey is always exploring mm. and understanding and learning more because always looking at that as well any musicians are coming in the home you know classical musician or folk musician or different artist and he was very, he's very open to mm. so that opportunity i always have and blessing is always from him you know to go of and course. look at that and it's you don't always get 
the parents or the fathers or the mothers to be that open sometimes because um, sometimes I've, I've, I've talked with other musicians even they come from a line of musicians they were very big traditionalists yeah. and you can't do it like this you can't do it like that oh, it ha- actually it happened in my family too I did it <laughs> <laughs> only my dad I think it happened, <laughs> happens in every family but um, I think to a certain extent like yeah. my, my dad was also uh, you know uh, he probably wasn't that much of a traditionalist. He just, mm-hmm. you know, he used to say, oh, you have to do it like this, this, this. But you know what? Let's try it like this. If it sounds good, we'll go with that, you know. Um, and and that's where you need to be broad, you know. Um, every generation is different, you know. I do accept, like, when we grew up, like, wasn't easy in the culture, in our mm. culture, in Indian culture and traditional hometown coming yep. from Rajasthan and settling in a traditional home. Yep. Mom was always difficult, uh, but dad is always <laughs> open. <laughs> and I, I get along with my dad than anyone else, which everyone knows that. <laughs> um, so freedom was there from my dad's side yeah. to just go and just explore and do what you want to do. And <laughs> and how good is it when you have a parent, and, and not everyone's in this situation like you and myself have been, that you have a parent that's supporting your music. Yeah, you need one of them, someone in the family. You need to. You do. They need to trust you that yes, you're doing it um, because there is a, there's a something. That's right, but not always. Not everyone has that opportunity. Not everyone is in the same boat, and 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 it's it's hard for some musicians because there are some really good musicians, and there's no musical in their family. And they're always on them about. And I, I grew up with a few musicians that their parents were factory workers. You yeah, know, yeah. you have to. You no, know, you have to finish university. You have to be an accountant or this or that. And it really, um, it, it really transitions that person while they're growing up. You know, to want to either rebel or they want to, you know, just give up music altogether and, and there is some talent there. You don't have to be from a musical family no, to have definitely. You don't talent. need to be talented. It can but you be do need the support. talent can be born. Re, you know, from yeah. come Yeah, you gotta you got you're gonna nourish it, you know, you yeah. gotta you gotta somebody have it. to know it or yeah. pick that up. Like, you know, my dad always said the the you know, diamond or something that mm. to you, you have, have to, to clean it up and you have to clean it all yeah. you know, you have to cook like burn it, like you yeah. to, then it shine. Yeah, something that's right, like something that. like that. Yeah, dumb in the rough. Sort rough. Of a thing. Well, you have yeah. to burn it, let it burn in the fire, and then yeah. you. Sh- Correct. Okay. So Correct. It's, somebody needs to pick. Yeah, and then you yeah. become a crazy person like us, you know? But a good crazy. <laughs> a good crazy. <laughs> I like my crazy. <laughs> a good crazy, you know? <laughs> um, now, uh, from from your studies here, you, you've been on to study your doctorate and you've become a doctor in music and everything like that. And then the next step is going out in the real world, right? And mm. trying to make a living out of that. Well, what I was your first step out of uni, out of your studies? What was the first thing that you did musically? First thing after uni, I did. I collected my father's um, songs, which is uh, sad to see that a lot of the songs, while being in family, you know, you know that um, he's wrote so many different songs mm. and three to four hundred compositions, collection as well. So for me, it's my aim is was that whatever happened, I don't know if I become whatever, if I have money to do things, but the first thing I did to collect all of the songs and put it in a, uh, started writing it in a book form. Mm, okay. So, Tr- transcribing it. And transcribing yep. and uh, sit down with my, uh, I was in India that time as well, to sit down with my dad and uh, try to understand, try to learn each words and meaning of that. Okay. Because you grow, when we grow up, we remember all the songs, but we need to know exactly word as well. What is the meaning? Because mm. if uh, in Indian folk songs or uh, they have a different different meaning of the Sufi songs or Kabir yeah. is there or wedding songs are there or mm. um, Bhartari like um, from child birth to the death, you know, till the end. You have so many ritual songs. Um, for me to find that to understand each word, what they, the earring call, they have a different name of in folk culture. To write it down, rhythm, each song, what should be played in that, um, put it together and write it and transcribe it. Like I put it uh, in a Hindi yeah. uh, folk language, and then I translate it in English as well. But now, hopefully, I'm uh, also working on this uh, 
um, five edition, which is going to come out if I get time and things craziness goes well. <laughs> it's always a journey. Yes, yeah, right? it's a journey. It's so I will try to bring those songs to into the recording session as well. Yep. Where now is the songs is out in a book form, which is called Traditional Folk Songs of Malwa. It's on Amazon. One book is there. Uh, 75 songs are there in that. And my PhD book is out, out there as well with Baba okay. Ladin Khasa because I did PhD on Mahir Gharana. Okay. Uh, a, gharana is a traditional way come from home. Like, it's different, different house, you know. They yep. learn from traditional. You learn from your father and then you teach to your son. And so it goes from generation to generation. generation to generation. So I come from Mahir Gharana. I did my PhD in Baba Ladin Khasa which is the... Uh, uh, teacher of Pandit Ravi Shankarji mm-hmm. uh, Guru. So that was the, he inspired me as well when I started doing a PhD and r- researching on him because he was a, he, he, he was all rounder, you know, he wrote so many music and so many, a musician he bring it out to the world and he was a crazy like us. Mm. I feel like, you know, learning violin, learning yep. so many different instruments and giving it to that. Because I wrote, when I was researching, one of the... Um, he started one school when, I don't know, his pandemic was happened as well before in his generation as well. Okay. In that research work I found. Okay. And that time was... Um, you know how now we also worried about different artists and yep. young generation and how... The, how we can help to other musicians or other people to mm. help. That time, Baba Ladin Khaza was doing the exa- same thing. He was going to door to door and, and trying to feeding the people as well and okay. uh, trying to the the kids who didn't have a parents or uh, lost, you know. And uh, so he collected all of the kids and then he started the Mahir band. Okay, it's called Mahir band, and there was no musician like there was in there was no like we talk about there was no generation musician. Yeah, you know, yep. he was the only one. He was learning from a uh, from every teachers, and he passed on that knowledge to all of these young kids playing sitar, violin, and he collected uh, one of the research work that I was doing. That this, you know, there was a war as well, mm-hmm. long time ago, yep. and he collected the uh, gun. You know the long gun, the shooting gun, the rifle gun? The rifles, yeah. And he cut it, rifle gun, and made it a xylophone type of instrument, wow. which is, yeah. Jeez, what a, that, what a story. That, and that's he was a, he was a, that crazy that he used to tie his head on a tree, or he used, used to tie his son head as well, and sometime, to when he practiced, so he doesn't fall asleep. So, so, ah, so he doesn't fall asleep. So he can keep practicing. Jeez. Jeez, you should look it up about I him. Will, I will. I he's will. got very good documentary as well. That's 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 commitment. And uh, not only to music, but no, to the cause. To cause cause whatever is happening at that time, he needed to be done and yeah. save those kids. And and that's where, really, where, when you're when you're talking about m- music, yeah, you, you, that's what you're looking at. You know, someone's, you know. Um, Emotional feeling, you want to fulfill that in a good way, in a positive way. I think uh, emotional way, if you try to feel, I don't know if I could be wrong, but in my understanding, if I try to feel, feel, fulfill someone else, how will I please? That emotion has to come from within me. That's first. what I'm talking about. F- your your if, emotion. If you're full inside, if you're, you're empty, someone else. how are you going to give? So if you're full, then you go out and giving. And so the music is to share, to exchange. We so can't right. just practice. So right. We need people. We need to, uh, to jam together. We need a gigs. We need to communicate. Yes, I practice at home. Daily routine is there. I've never missed, you know. Mm. My riaz is never missed. Mm. This, But we need people. We need more you gigs. We need a communication. We need to collaborate so true. more. So true. And that they they. They're the words of every musician striving to get to that next level. Yeah. Um, exactly. I think a lot of musicians are thinking that way as well. You need people to play with, to, to work with, you know. You, you need, you, as you said, you'll, you'll, you can rehearse by yourself every day, every day. And you yeah. can uh, rehearse for eight hours. Until you get on that stage, you, you don't know what it's going to be no. like. You know? That's where you 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 are there. You are connecting. You are forgetting about people Correct. who you are. You just there in 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 the music, and that's what is exactly right. And you're not the same person on stage no. that you are. No. You know, with 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 
with your family or with friends or anything. Once it's, you, it's character. I think I yeah. feel like uh, as a musician and as an artist or or as a human being, I think we are having so many ma- so many layers of mask. You know, of course, of course. Um, which is being in a, it's good. Hmm. Just every, it's it's hard for everyone to understand. It is, and this is the conversation I've had with many other musicians as yeah. well. Um, you know, I, I had a, a, a did a podcast um, not long ago with a friend of mine who another guitarist, a bit mm-hmm. with Thomas. You know, and um, he was we were just talking about you know people don't understand what the musician goes through. Musician goes through a lot of phases. They go through the phase where they're working or they're creating. They go through the phase where they've got anxiety. They've got through go through the phase where they're marketing. They go through the phase where they're trying to get to that next level, play with other people, trying to um, make a living out of it. You know. Yeah, it's it's hard, and at that moment, it's like they're telling, okay, you practice, then you send an email. Mm. You need to do this. You need to do that, and yeah. all these things. And I think the that's the hardest part for me is the marketing. Yeah, I can play. I can I can rehearse. I can play with people. I can you know. It's it's not a problem. My I think my <laughs> my inability to market myself I think is my downfall sometimes, and and it, it gives me it gives me anxiety. You know, <laughs> sometimes I do too much and I get in trouble because. Is, but uh, what people, is too much? Well, no, what people say to me, oh, you're not posting, or you should share things, you know. Yeah. And I, as soon as I start sharing with friends or something, yeah. then I'm thinking, what am I doing? Like I'm sending to, it's not my work. Yeah. I'm just let me. Uh, focus on music let yeah. me do that yeah S- and uh, that's yeah let me focus on my music that is i think if, if everyone's sort of not everyone's but most musicians want to focus on their music doing all the marketing doing all the online things and it takes up a lot of time it's different like a different mind you know you have to totally yeah. switch off from one to sitting and they just taking your time on the computer screen and yeah it's um what one thing is you're playing and one thing you're promoting a gig another thing is to constantly do it constantly to put content out there constantly to to you know to have something out there so people can see and everything like that but i remember once upon a time you used to have a tape you do a demo tape and you give it to someone oh here's my demo tape have a listen yeah and that was it you don't have to do another, another demo tape for another, another few months. No. Like this, now it's every day, you know. Learning different, different tunes as well, like every day. Oh, yeah. Like oh, yeah. Work oh, yeah. Like a musician and as well, learning. Some ways, it's, I think it's made it easier, but mm. some ways it's not. Yeah, I get you. There's, there's sometimes... There balance, like having a group, exchanging a tunes, what we're doing, that's fine and easier. But in the other way, I prefer... We're sitting together, having a rehearsal. We are jamming oh, together. Definitely, That's having the physical connection. Physical you connection. Know? Marketing, no, it's 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 not. It's so diff- to, to, totally different. I have to do marketing. I have to make a poster. I have to do all of the. I get all, all the artist bio as well. Send it to the venue, and yeah. negotiate with them. all these things. What they're going to provide and all this. It's it's not easy. It's not easy, and that's no. all part of the admin stuff. Yeah, we need that, to, and how do we going to admin money? How are we going to pay the other person? That's another thing. That's right. And and that's that's the thing, isn't it? Like you're you're spending a lot of time on, on the admin. Then your you your your ability to play sometimes goes down in quality because you're you've you've invested a lot of time in the marketing or that, the admin stuff. It it happened. It happened like sometime if I um so much work is there and if I don't practice every day like I feel like no, something is missing. Mm. We need to connect with our instrument every day. Oh, every definitely, day every definitely. Day. And I think the when you don't connect, that's when you start thinking, oh, I didn't rehearse or I didn't do this, I didn't do that. And then we, the gig is coming up, then your anxiety builds, yeah. you know. And you think, oh, am I prepared enough for this or that? And then you, you'll go and do the gig, but... You're exhausted afterwards. Yeah, definitely. You know, even any instrument you like, classical music with sitar, especially, definitely needs everyday practice. Every 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 instrument. I'm 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 under the thinking that every instrument you need to practice every day. Yeah. It doesn't matter what it is. Yeah, you need true. to put it into your hands. You need to feel it. You need to even if even if you're not doing anything 
too drastic and if you're not even not song or anything yeah. just scale you know yeah, just exercise a skill that exactly will right. gives to the impact on when you go into rehearsal it yeah, yeah. because you tune your ear is a tune your, your mind muscles. is tuned your muscles are there ready to yeah yeah know, i agree um now sarita on a different subject you're from ujain U- 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 ujain and that that's in the middle of Sort of in the middle of India, central, isn't it? Central, in the central, north. yeah. Yeah. So, um, that's it's below Delhi and it's, it's in between Delhi and Mumbai. And Mumbai, that's yeah, it. It's not far. Now, mm. you, you we were talking about, you know, things before, and mm. you've you've done a few things during COVID to help, um, you know, doing some online concerts and raising some money. Um, and it's always, uh, you know, the musician always has this thing for people who are struggling because I think they're always struggling themselves, right? And you did you did a lot for you know for 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 the community there. You 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 did a concert. You raised some money for them. Tell us a bit about that. Uh, that was a very difficult time, isn't it? Mm, very for, difficult. Very for, difficult. For, for everyone. Yeah, I did that. Um, how it started, um, I was doing quite good, doing concerts. I had a concert book with Yuval Ashkar as well. Then I had a concert book with um, Zani and Anita. Mm -hmm. Zani, you know, Zani Kolak, she's a violin player. And Anita, um, she plays um, cello. Okay. So through the Boat, we were supposed to do an Amplify String um, together, a concert. And then we got a call that, okay, there is no concert, everything is going to stop. So... The board started that adopt, not cancel, that time. Yeah. So we did that concert online first, and that's I. Sh- and I watched it. It was really good. <laughs> yeah, but you don't know about the behind of this story. Oh well, no one knows about behind Nobody because <laughs> I was just I was just watching. <laughs> <laughs> the the, uh, the message came. Okay, Sorita, we're sending you this package. So you st- we did that at home. The three individual people, Anita and Azani, and we were in our own home. And Daniel and uh, what's it, uh, from Boat mm-hmm. and Eyal, they sent me a package, a packet of like because of course musician we don't we, straight away we didn't have a recording system like what that's right we can go to the recording or we didn't have uh, arrange anything that okay I can record and send you this musician no. um, and I'm, I, I just I want to stay away from that call me in the studio I'll play and that's it that's it I don't want to have a, a studio and learning all this extra thing. I'm better learning in this mm. <laughs> most songs and thing. Anyway, we did that um, concert, but the behind of that, they send the Zoom some recording yep. stuff. But the delivery package came as a like a white package from Parcel, and was written, "Don't touch it." There is a, underneath some uh, wipes. There is some sanitizer. <laughs> Really? So once you sanitize it, wash it, and then you bring it, um, open it, yeah, and the instruction is there, how to start and everything. So that's how we recorded that concert, and I was so scared, to be honest with you, because so, uh, w- parcel is coming. Yeah. Our ang- feeling is there, hey, parcel <laughs> is there, we're going to open, you know, like yeah. something. But suddenly the parcel is delivered that this is to record something, and because it's COVID, you're not allowed to touch I this. Need- you have to and it was suddenly that anxiety was like hit that what is going on anyway yeah. we did that concert um everything went well then my uh in when i came back from uh, india in 2016 before that i did my father's uh, uh cd and um honor him for all his work and everything because mm. i don't know i thought him, i might be not be able to see him again you know who knows so i did the documentary and i called up his friends and everything and i start to organizing all the things done in india took his blessing and under the nath academy of sound of music i took okay i want to continue this mu- his music and his legacy so his birthday comes on the 12th of june um and that was the same time of the covid period as well mm. and this i think a little bit it w- there was a restriction was saying that you can't you can't um you have to be 1.5 meter distance yep 
and everyone said how is going to be possible but Eyal and Daniel was with they were very good you know they, they said no we do it and I said well I don't know if we're going to make money or thing but it will help uh, our people out there listening said mm. to give encourage you know that we can be still possible to That's do right. it you know um was hard to cuz camera was the uh, other way and everyone so in that concert i had amla yes that's baran right. was there um kori on that then kamil kamil yep. fagari boni smith uh b uh, dancer was there the uh, bezel was there in that manmit uh, volkan Vol- volga, not volkan volga volga volga, volga was there volga was there and um my friend ranji was there and gabriel in that whole team 10 mm. 12 people the team were there behind me So that was the first concert I did. The second year again the uh, the co- every the year I do lockdown <laughs> and unfortunately every year I try to do my dad concert in a proper way and you know enjoy a way. Yeah. But it's sad way it's like this always covid the always boat. same <laughs> but the covid hit very hard in India. Um so both uh also approach and then we uh, Eyal was there and Daniel and uh, we did together we put a concert together like fundraising concert so we call it call that concert sounds of yara mm-hmm. and also tribute to my father of legacy of his music in in india and the artist who are suffering uh, through due to due to the covid uh, because there are so many artists uh, uh artists we see uh, on the f- cameras artists we see on the f- you know media but i'm talking about those artists which is they never been out there their daily day to day life is to go and some money and bring home to yep. so they can feed their family which is 20 dollars a month or 50 dollars a month you yep. know for that so i thought let's do that concert and everyone was 18 musician that time i had 18 musician because more um i thought i don't know maybe next year i won't have that possible but i'm doing it because this needs to be done mm. that was a urge was calling yeah. is there and so paid all of the artists and um, did um, setting and everything cameraman everything is done then we raised the money to send the money to india as well and to 50 44 houses we i fa- uh, well I'm well not done. i um, but that's you you raised the money for 44 yeah, houses yeah 44 houses have and have those money went to the each a musician house local musician the list okay. they gave me a list and i i know all of the musician to and going to the ujain um ujain wale is a, a organization is there which is sending a money you know is uh, why would people trust me yeah or why would put people trust you to give a money yeah. and it's quite good common question we give uh, money to charity and things but it needs to go to the to the right people, the right people. so that's I called the grocery guy I went in India um, and on the phone I called Sonu Bhaiya my um, assistant and I told him how much is going to cost to feed the 44 houses and they calculated 2200 rupees something less this so I called calcul- 44 houses yeah and send the money to India and, and those kids and some of the kids some uh, one of the musician I felt so inspired and I also wanted to do this gig to raise money uh Jayendra Ravel he's uh he played in a lot of my music when I went go to India and mm-hmm. music as well dramas because I did some music in mu- movies as well I sang in few okay. mu- movies yep. and drama theater and yep. artwork and uh um, production team and a lot of the director I work in that and he was always there uh for, as a musician like a dholak and tabla and percussionist you know like a session session musician, musician yep. yeah um and also session musician plus he can go and to the if and he, he doesn't he can play anywhere you anywhere, know yeah. bring the money one of one of those one <laughs> of those artists you can call him such a gulubia you know and his wife was uh pregnant and okay. he d- and caught into covid admit in the hospital they lost he lost his wife and the baby he just and uh, that's news when i uh, that's when you three hit o'clock, it 3 o'clock 3:30 midnight and i the reality hits the reality hits and i'm thinking how is he going to be doing it mm. and they are not just him there are more artists like march community uh in india also they have a uh, like every 2 or 4 kilometers you go the language change you know dialects change yeah so there are t- rural artists as well there mm. um folk artists yeah classical artists they just sitting there and they just doing their riyas and go to the somewhere they going to play band was a stop in in because wedding there was no wedding was weddings. going on so there are musicians like that who 
go to the procession. Yeah. Um, dead body was going, but there was no money to go to the, uh, to you know, in our culture, when the person die, they also take take the dead body through music. Like procession. Yeah, um, we used to do that in our culture too. Yeah, yeah it's all it's music's everywhere but, from from but start during, to end. But during COVID, there was there nothing. was no, there was not even enough coffin. There was not enough of wood to mm. burn the body. There was um, that body was burning from one another top of each other, and there was a fight was going on to give me the coffin, give me the and and the people who were burning. The story was there because they wanted to make, they wanted to feed their family as well. So the price was up as well to burn, to take the dead body. There was no uh, because of the COVID, the body is there, but your own, you, your son, you're not allowed to touch. Yeah. So there, the five people are coming to collect because the body is covered in the, 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 you know, the whatever was going. Yeah. On. Also, with that, it brings more conflict. Yeah, conflict and between uh, between the locals, between, between local and uh, and I'm thinking, where is the human human humanity? humanity? Where's the humanity? Like, yeah, the daughter is crying, the father is crying, but he can't touch his own family. Yeah, to see last. Yeah, and I thought, it, it's yeah, it brought on a lot of things around the world, and and I think um, sometimes we and us as musicians, <laughs> yes, we we were hit hard, but you know, there's always something worse. You know, well, um, I think we need to think, notice that. And so, I know some people thought I was crazy doing all this thing, and but or some people <laughs> wanted to join me, some people refused it. Which is, I say to the old people who joined me on this concert, thank you, thank you, and thank you. And people who didn't join me and they didn't believe me, what do I do? Well, I can't do things. You, you, know? you, you don't do anything, you just continue what no, you do, and what you just you do what do? feels right. That's exactly you know, and when you do what feels right, and you feel that you've you know, you've helped. You've, or you've you've done something towards the cause or to, for a positive thing to help. Sometimes, you know, some people don't have the ability to actually help, you know, because of their own situations, yeah, right? Situ- yeah. But you'll find that those people will do as much as they can to actually, you know, at least be well, on... We all need help, you know. We, we need, all need we help. We all need somehow. And, uh, when some I, people need more help than others, but... Well, you know, when I was going through my downtime as well, thank you to a lot of my good friends who... Uh, pull me out of, um, yeah. and so I thank uh, you for all of that too. It's your friends, and and specifically, um, also if you're a musician, your colleagues, because they're all in the same boat. And and one day you'll feel like this, the other day they'll feel like that. Yeah, and you have to support each other. Exactly. You know, and um, one day hopefully they will understand. Sometimes uh, they might not understand, but eventually down the land maybe. Yeah, of course, maybe. and and I think. Um, your well-being is is very very important. Um, even now, after after all the COVID crap, yeah. you know, well-being is very important because we know what we've gone through. Now we have to concentrate even more on the well-being. You know, like um, you know, like I I remember, like even even before COVID, I had never meditated in my life, and I started meditating. Even this was before COVID. Yeah, yeah. Um, I started feeling really good about everything. You know, yeah. COVID hit. And all you can do is somewhere it you brings know? down. I think it happened. It like was feels like everyone was rushing. Was yeah, going it fast. happened straight away. It's just like okay, gigs stopped. Like I was supposed to do a concert. Yeah. On the weekend that we went into the first lockdown, we were ready. You know, we were like you know, and then so the, there was the talk of this of that, and then yeah. all of a sudden, not this weekend. It was the end of March or like that. Bang. No, that's it. No concert, no nothing. So what happened? In, they lifted the the lockdown in June or July, and then the numbers started going up again. So I thought, you know what? Let's do a concert in October. We we locked in the date. The second lockdown. No luck. <laughs> I stopped <laughs> no watching. Luck. I didn't. As soon as I heard that, okay, all these numbers going to oh, no news. Yeah, there was no news. There was no nothing, and I think that's the best. Yeah, I, I don't watch. I, I don't watch away the news from myself. The news and TV. <laughs> yeah, I don't watch the news. I don't watch any of that <laughs> stuff. Um, I turn the music on. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was unfortunate because we had, we had, invested a lot of time. Yeah. Like we had, we had some really good musicians. You know, I had, I had Amla, I had Tamer, I had Volga yeah, with yeah. me. Mm-hmm. We had some, you know, really good dancers and singer and everything. Yeah. We all, we were all gelling, you know. Yeah. Um, and it was just unfortunate. 
you know, and we didn't actually end up doing a concert at all. No. So a lot of bands, are, my a lot of my bands are broke as yeah. well because of that. Oh, because some people or COVID or yeah. vaccination problem was yeah. there too. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Okay, no. are you vaccinated? Uh, oh, this uh, that. Oh, come on! If well, I not that that matters, but yeah, it anyway. doesn't matter, you know. But I, I get what you're but saying. But you know that I faced that too. My drummer is walked off. Another musician walked off. Yeah. They don't want to play because of the yeah. Point. Okay. But not only that, some you know some some venues didn't allow you to come in if you weren't vaccinated. So it was a uh, it, yeah. yeah. It's it's been a trying time. Sorry. Yeah. It's been a trying time. But now you know we like to think that we're out of it, and <laughs> you know going going forward, you know yep. we want to play music. We exactly. want to we want to do what we did. You know, exactly, before yeah. that, and you know, our our love and our, our obsession is there for for music, and I think the more and more now we can help with the exposure of musicians and getting them, you know, out there and gigging and getting people to go and actually watch them and listen to their music yeah. and supporting them. I think that's that's probably the best thing that we can we can do. We need um, more con community connecting to that together. Yes, yeah. We were talking about this. Yeah. We need more community, more musical communities to connect. Yeah. Like there's a lot of associations working in silo at the moment. Everyone's yeah. trying to, which, which is which in is no great. fault of their own. Yeah, it's good, it, good, good. You know, um, but yeah. yeah, there needs to be some sort of a connection um, between uh, musicians and, 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 and these associations and things coming together. And, you know, um, I know... For example, grant writing is, you know, sometimes is a hard thing for some musicians. Yeah. Not everyone can write a grant. Not everyone can get a grant. You know, some. Yeah. You know, I never some, got any grant. Yeah, I've 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 never gotten a grant <laughs> in my life. Um, but I'm doing what best I can, and I, I yeah, know, I, same. But you know what? Some some people have that gift to write a grant and can and can put it together really well. And yeah. good on them, you know. Um, yeah. In some other cases, you get sponsorships or you get, you know, you you've, you you put in your own money, you know, which is I'm sure you've done. I've done in the past. So many places and you think, all right, how to manage. Okay. You have to pay. You have yeah. To pay this. And, and this is different to what happens in Europe hmm. because in Europe, the artists are supposed to be get paid. They, they, I'm not giving, they, they're under the impression, I'm not giving my own money. I'm there to perform. Yeah. Uh, they have to pay me, you know, whereas here, we're on the other side of the, <laughs> Uh, not only of the world, yeah. but on but the other change, side of the... It's changing now. Yeah, I mean, it's look... It's changing slowly, slowly. They are start to understanding the value of the artist. And... Importance of the artist as well. That is, first and foremost, um, yeah. going out there, because it's not just going out there and playing. It's the time that you've invested to, to be at the gig. To be at the gig, yeah. Rehearsals, organizing your band, organizing. You know how, how hard it is to organize a rehearsal and with seven or eight people. We don't get paid for extra for that. No, no, no. Like, and, and, and we do it everything from our heart. It's exactly. our culture. Like I call artists for rehearsal. It's yeah. my nature. I cook, I feed. That's, That's our it. culture. We That's don't right. do anything with the cup of tea. We don't, I don't let people go with that. No. Yeah, exactly. Food is That's the main right. thing as well. But you know, people. sometimes you think, you know, in, to organize all of this because people can make it, some people can't, some, you know, it, the bigger the band is, the more, the bigger challenge it is to get people on that night at that same time, you know. And then I started, uh, I actually started doing different rehearsals from the same band in different nights of the week. Mm -hmm. Rehearsal with this, we have this, this group, like split them up in two. Yeah, yeah. I'll do rehearsal with them and then with them, then with them, then with them and then... Once in a month, we'll get them all together and, and, and try and do something because mm -hmm. everyone's everyone's busy. Everyone's Everyone, got lives. Yeah. Everyone works yeah. during the day and everything yeah. like that. Um, but you're trying to figure out the best way possible, you know. Exactly. And that's that's it's hard. It's it's challenging. It's challenging. Some very hard. Yeah. Yeah, but because we love the music so much, and because we've got an obsession with what we do, and you know, we we go through that craziness, okay. you know. <laughs> Um, yes. Well, we can't live without music. No, we can't live without no. music. It's a form of oxygen, it's, you know. This is, this is the love. Yeah, exactly. You know, this is I mean, the you are brought up with music, you know, yeah. in your household. I was brought up with music in my household. It's, it's something that is not, uh, you, you can't, you can't see yourself without music or something in the background playing at home or something. Some, yeah. Something's rearing in the background or you know if it's not blaring it's you know it's somewhere in the background or or you're playing you know so <laughs> even sleeping at night if somebody's playing yeah your mind is straight away going yeah. oh, what's tune is this uh, that's right <laughs> like um 
my, my, my wife's an artist and she yeah. and she's also a cake made in, but she's also she cakes, makes cakes and she's an artist and mm-hmm. she does sculptures and painting and stuff and she goes I always do things better when you're playing that's great so that's that's a well, good good vote of confidence you know well everyone needs music in their life yeah, yeah but she goes it's different when you play it on you know on yeah. the serial or whatever and it's different when you have a live person just playing because it's 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 that energy, the, the soul, you know, it's, it's, it's there. Yeah. When I'm not playing, I just have my, like, sometime need to learn the tune, you know. And yeah. you don't have time and think. Okay. <laughs> but especially I'm, I'm playing in the psychedelic rock band as well, Spawn. And it's, it's How's another that world. Going? It's pretty great. We've do, we done a vinyl as well. We've done CDs in okay. the album. We did... Um, Last week, um, gig two days ago, we did a gig as well. At the Tote, was it? Yeah, at the Tote, we did. Because that's a crazy place, and I thought. Yeah. Next one we're doing at the Max Watts. At Max Watts. Max Watts on twenty nine. They've, got, some, they've October, got a really yeah. good sound system at Max Watts. Yeah. They've got a really we good did. sound system. Yeah. So we're doing that, and then we're recording another album as well. Oh, so. awesome! But we had a hard time as well during COVID too with band uh, mm. with that Spawn band because. One of the bass players, she had a cancer. Um, oh, jeez. And she Sorry was just it. young, 29, 30 years old. And, jeez. Uh, when I, two, two and a half years ago, she, they said oh, she's got only three months to leave. And, but then music kept her going. And that was, she was so determined, like on the rehearsal, even coming from a hospital, oxygen mask and cylinder. Oh, and really? Thing. You yeah, see what I, music does? I've never seen, I've never seen anyone in my life that she's ever. Half an hour oxygen, like so, yeah, really, yeah, with the, yeah. with the uh, like in you know, a the tank, they come yeah, with yeah, this yeah. thing. And she said, "Oh, come on, let's do the rehearsal." And then I've got only ten minutes guests left. <laughs> Uber is coming. Jeez. All the hair is like falling off and everything, but determined. And we, all, she also that push her us as well. Inspira- inspiration, in, in, inspiration, you know, like yeah. it's, it's inspires us that if she can get out of the, even she knows that she will die any moment. Mm. But she passed away, like she lived, um, she lived, passed away on 31st of May. Jeez. This year, and we did um, yeah, tribute concerts. And, yeah. Uh, she played in that vinyl as well. So I'm lucky really? that before uh, she's um, like gone, but yeah. we did, her music is still alive with us, and we did the full vinyl. So she sort of left a legacy. Definitely. You know? she, was, she was great. Mm. She's in the rock world. See, this well. is the thing. Sometimes, you know, all the all, all the medication in the world. Sometimes. Well, she was a jewel. Yeah. She her but name music is jewel. was musical what, what kept her going, right? Yeah. So, music has magical powers. And definitely. Always. And so that's that's band is going good as well, and um, doing my best, what is possible, I can. So, what does the future hold for Sarita? Like, in regards to, I suppose, recording, maybe. Um, and any other diverse sort of bands? Are you comfortable where you are now or does the future hold something else? I never want to be comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> and, I mean, I, I like to be comfortable, but music sense, I always like to explore and see mm. what possibility is there. Yep. So the new band, like, uh, now I've got this band, Sorita McCarg in our band, which is mm-hmm. open band. Okay. Open to any artist. Can I want to, collab- come down and visit. to co- yeah. collaborate, come and join because it's always um, I'm open to having a gig. So this Pentelias, he's uh, with he, with um, with me right now in the band. Yuval Ashkar is there. Uh, Corey, Roscoe in that. Oh, Roscoe as well. Amla sometime when yep. she find time and sometimes she's busy. But t- for the last couple of years, Amla playing with. Yep. Uh, Amla is great. Yeah, she's amazing. She's, she's great. Amazing. Great. Um, Basil, she's still there yeah it's open to everyone she Max Stonehouse is playing right now with okay. me too so I'm doing a um, concert on the hot spring Diwali celebration okay so that's a big it's one a, it's a big one special three day celebration happening and um, the organization they ask because see again I work for community I work for people I work to bring how I can bring it community and how what, what I can do mm. through music you know um and support artists as well because it's not like I will take you. Artists need to get paid as well, so it's well properly done. So 
this 22nd you, of, sorry, 22nd of um, October, I'm organizing that Diwali concert. And second day is a symphony 10 piece of orchestra is going to be there as well. Jeez. Uh, age, a uh, day before this, uh, on 23rd, there is a, um, for people from old age as well, they can come and enjoy yep. and celebrate. So there will be special movie night for them as well. Mm. And then Fantastic. 22nd, we p I'm bringing the culture from um, uh, all around uh, different Arabic uh, try to combine with the music instrument a different culture together okay. with, with folk and contemporary dance as well. Nice. I will be dancing myself as well. Because oh, I've learned folk music and Kathak as well um, for three years for my teacher. So I'm trying to... I haven't finished yet. <laughs> like life... <laughs> I don't know. No Till I die. No one finishes. I <laughs> I've always said the musician <laughs> always goes to the end, never retires, you know? It's it's nice because uh, there is always possibility to what new can be bring. Yeah. What else I can do that. What what else is there yeah. that I can do? Who else can I play with? You know? Well, uh, on eighth I'm um going to giving a meditation and uh, oh, okay. sitar as well to prison. Women in to health. Women's Prison. prison, okay. Which is it? Happen. It so many um, stories are there in as well. So. so it will be challenging for me to see. I, I don't think it'll be challenging for you, but it will be rewarding for you. Uh, I hope so. But I love to through music and see if I can. Of course, do, of course. Um, help and if anyone can how benefit from that. What else I've got? You know, all the musicians have this thing about their energy, about their soul. Yeah, and that is that little thing that you build the energy from, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, you know? And that gets bigger the more you play and the more you 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 give your music to people. And as you said before, you share. You, you, well, one you person know? can't do anything. You have no. five fingers, you have to hold together. That's right, you can't that's right. Have, you know, but sometimes you, you got no choice, you need to do it yourself. Yeah, well, one person have to, leader, you have to be, if I sit, if like during COVID, if I sat down for two years and if mm. I didn't do that, um, I don't think so. I would have be able. To, I was happy because mm. I wanted to do something. Because you can see front of things, you know, people yeah. suffering and doing something. Yeah. We were just looking at in Melbourne, sitting here, and but outside door. If you look at outside door, there are so many people. Who you oh yeah, it's going through a lot. So if you have that that compassion and love and mm. respect as well for people. Uh, and I'm sure we all do in our own way. Of course, of course. So I, I, I do my best and I'm um, definitely people, I need everyone's support as well. Oh, and, uh, and, and that is very important. You know, we, we like to support, but we also like to be supported sometimes as well because, you know, I think it goes, has to go two ways. Definitely, yeah. You know, um, if, and, and, and unfortunately, in, in Melbourne in the last few years, the musicians have struggled and they haven't had a lot of recognition, right? And this is a, this is a problem. This is a problem because musicians are also artists. They're, you know, they're there to make people, you know, well, people live like, better. You people know? like you, we need more because mm. to find a jewel and bring it out. Well, and that's what we're trying to do, uh, and, and that's because they are jewels, like they of are course, everywhere, you know. Of course, of course, they're not not in a, some of them, not even social media. Some of them, not you can't no, really that's find right. them. They're really uh, doing their own, you know, inside the thing. Yeah, of amazing course. artists. And this is yeah. why, um, and this is one of the reasons why I've I've started doing the podcast because mm. these people need to have have a platform, have an avenue probably just to start somewhere, you know? And it's not about just getting the big names on this podcast yeah. or trying to get it. No. For me, I'm trying to get the people who are working and who are, you know, giving, you know, their their lives to to the musical cause and not getting a lot back. And playing, when you know, this is a wonderful idea and uh, sitting down there because... When you're playing gigs or when you're meeting people out there, you don't get to you you don't get to know exactly right the uh, the story of the behind yeah. of all yeah. the, you know things yeah. going on and and that's a very interesting thing because some people have some interesting stories of how they became a musician and why why are they doing this why are they going through the craziness like we are you know and and we all have a, a, a common reason why is because we love music but yeah. there are other aspects of that and I think. When, you know, when, when I play and sometimes you don't even have to 
speak to the other musician when you're playing with them you're speaking that that language that universal language you don't have to speak their language you know no no you don't you, it, you don't need to like i'm working with so many musicians i just need to hear the which key they're playing that's it give me the sa for us indian music <laughs> is only one sa or drone that's right you know from and that we that you build and that you, that, that's where you build not only your music but your relationship with the musician yeah now on the other side of that, you're not going to gel with a lot of musicians, right? Mm. Not with everyone. <laughs> but you still respect and you acknowledge them of being a musician because they're in the same boat as you, you know? Yes, some musicians have a bigger personality, let's just say, right? And some have a bit more, they're a bit more introverted. But I think that that unity of music is going to bring these these people together. And, and what we're trying to do here is trying to get that that established here and trying to get some exposure you know um we're, we're all doing it we're all doing this voluntarily you know we're, yeah, we're trying yeah. to do good for the cause you know yeah. um i I'm, I'm i'm very lucky i have i have roland you know doing doing the audio and everything like that and and in this um <laughs> you know in, in in this sort of like period that we are now you know where, where everything is um, a lot of thing is uh, you have to pay for this, pay for that, pay for that. You know, you you get that that sense that you know people want want to do it with their heart and they're, they're really happy to do it. You know, like we, what Roland and I were trying to do here is at the SC revival as well is trying to get these musicians on board and trying to you know give them the opportunity to have some you know some some exposure and trying mm -hmm. to, to to help the cause. Um, you know, we 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 really we're really fired up about it. But on the other side, you do need to finance finance it as well as some, you know. So, so musicians do need to get paid, of you course. know. Yeah, musicians. And this is the bottom line sometimes as well. Um, mm. And and been playing for for many many Look, many sometime, years. Sometimes you know? uh, I do a lot of gigs. You know, I don't do for money. Hmm. Sometimes you don't oh, have to do for money. We've Sometime done that a lot of times, you know. You have to see what is the cause, you know. What, what is, is the cause? What is the cause? Um, and the thing that I don't like though. If I know it's for a cause and I know it's, you know, yeah. but when they say to me, oh, you'll get good exposure. It's not about that. No. And I've, I've done gigs like that. And in the end, you know what? They're the worst gigs to play and yeah. they won't give you the exposure at all, no. you know. But for a cause, you know, for something, yes, I'll go and play. Yeah. But I also need to live and I have to make a living, you know, and uh, you're in the same situation. Yeah, you, you know? just have to see what their cause is. And I think I ask the people, what is the cause? Show me the what are you going to do mm. it? Yeah. Because otherwise... What are we doing it for? What, what are we doing for? Like, yeah. Okay. Um, name and fame, you know. This is all like a f this journey. Today's there, tomorrow yeah. not there. It's like, e exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, of course. It's like, yeah, a lot of people, well-known name people and everything. Name is nothing. Just the name. It's just a name sometimes, you know. Well, but it's, it's given by our parents. <laughs> that's all. <laughs> when we were born, did you that's know your right. name? No, uh, I no, didn't know my didn't name know. was Rita. Exactly, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so we hear, start hearing it from parents. And yeah, then, of course. Um, but no, this is the. Um, yeah, we need to do it. Yeah. With the proper. We way need. We yeah. need to boost the the. The industry somehow, the music industry here, and and, and the musicianship is there. There are yeah. musicians there. There are you know people you know really good people who not only young and up and coming people but people who have been there for a while and they're still trying you know they're still going through that realm of trying to get gigs and marketing and everything like that and and, and I think we all need to to start probably helping each other as well yeah. building this some is, this sort is of about the time where everyone understand that uh, we need to we need to help each other and build a community. Correct. We do I need to build a community. We do need in to every field, you know. I'm not yeah, of course. I'm doing a sixteenth. I'm doing a community uh, workshop. I'm, I'm uh, in Warburton Market. Okay. So I'm doing a cooking workshop. Oh, beautiful! So because it's fest our festival season now. No, this is a Ganesha festival, Lord That's Ganesha, right. and um, Matt Stoner is playing with me that for the drum. So I'm doing a cook. How to connect the community and how to connect the kids even to show them a culture. Mm. So f about f going to be 50 or 60 kids. So we'll be teaching them uh, simple, you know, how the traditional food we cook in the festival yep. time what's happened um, and teach them how to be like, what is the celebration of 
life, light, color festivals and things. Yep. So I'm doing that and uh, connecting Warburton community together as well. From connection. That's very again, important. It's a connection. And there's a also, at Leon, there's a very handful of good, uh, strong women uh, running that as well. Always important. Always important. Yeah. Look, Sarita, thank you very much for being on this podcast. It's thank been you. an absolute pleasure. And hopefully we'll do it again one day and, um, you know, we'll have more and more to talk about and, you know, our journeys will probably coincide somewhere, you know. You never know, <laughs> definitely, musically. Definitely, definitely. You know? It's going to go <laughs> more further and further and further because it's a, it's a right the, place, right time. That's it. Correct, correct. Thank you once again, Sarita. Thank you. Thank you so much. No worries. All right, Sarita. Thank you once again. All the very best. Cheers. Hope you enjoyed the Strike Accord podcast. Be sure to visit valentinoflamenco.com to access more podcast episodes, news, and other projects that I'm currently working on. Thanks for listening and watching.